Um, hi everyone, I'm Lim Yue, State Assembly Woman for Kampung Tungku. Um, in the absence of an MC, yes, it is possible. But uh, as far as we have been, you know, communicating with the MC, uh, we have managed. I mean, my office has managed to provide some uh, payment for the bills, especially like electricity in the common areas. And earlier in this year, we provided uh, fees for the cleaners. So uh, that helps keep that at bay. And I think uh, one of the uh, good things also that we have at Sea Park Apartments is that. Uh, residents actually take care of themselves and their cleanliness so we don't have cases like in the PPRs where rubbish is everywhere you know people throwing things from uh, above and so on and so forth so that is one good thing about it and also MBPJ can still come and collect the rubbish but of course we want to have a functioning MC back as soon as possible in the ideal situation uh, it would be having a functional MC uh, come back and be able to uh, manage the apartments as a whole. Uh, but in the interim, uh, we are trying to pull residents together uh, and also to support the residents association that is there. Yeah, because the residents association can conduct activities that are beneficial to the residents' uh, welfare and also uh, well-being, safety, even cleanliness. So think of it as a normal you know, residence association uh, that you have at the Taman. You know, they collect uh, fees, monthly fees for security guards, uh, so on and so forth. Um, so we are encouraging residents to help also support the residence association uh, to, to be able to maybe collect some small contributions and to conduct things or to uh, tackle matters that pertains to residents' well-being, safety, everything short of maintenance. Because maintenance is under the jurisdiction of MC and it cannot be conducted by any other party. Yeah. Okay, um, I would say that the solution is maybe out of bounds for the individual resident, but uh, each uh, SIPA apartment resident can assist the MC which is non-existent now, uh, and the RA, which is still operational, uh, in uh, keeping the place clean, yeah, maintaining your area cleanliness. And also, if you are interested to help out in this, uh, I would really encourage them to approach the RA and uh, find out more about you know, the journey that uh, they've been through, you know, through the courts, and we also drag them to the uh, Strata, and tri uh, Strata Tribunal uh, Court uh, about one year ago. Uh, there are a lot of uh, twists and turns to, to the story um, and why do I call for people to be involved is because uh, people like Gary and Annie and Elvira have been like shouldering the, uh, the, the burden for almost 20 years since they found out and even if we come to a solution later on, which I hope we do, um, they are also tired. Uh, and I think in any good organisation, whether it's an RA or an MC, uh, there needs to be some kind of succession planning. Um, so, the, you know, those who are like maybe in their 50s, uh, early 60s, or those who uh, have time to contribute, I would really, you know, encourage them to, to step up and, and, and uh, support the RA. So we are tackling the problem on multiple angles. Uh, the first, of course, uh, COB has always been uh, with us through the journey of this case, uh, uh, reporting back to us and also advising on you know, the current status where the MC is not present. Um, I've actually also conveyed uh, residents' uh, wishes to meet and discuss this uh, with uh, YB Ngakoming, the Minister of Housing. Uh, but of course, uh, because of the case complexity, so uh, the ministry is actually uh, consulting the different units. Uh. So from what I know that they have been consulting the strata unit, also the legal unit and also getting feedback from uh, COB and BPJ. So we hope that that information can be you know, brought together uh, soon and the ministry also may be able to point us a way out. I think maybe if I can respond to some of the comments that I saw, you know, on the videos uh, about like digging out old documents, uh, I, you know, the building plans that were approved and all, 
Um, unfortunately, I have to share that uh, we have exhausted all avenues. So, of course, the first place we went to was MBPJ. That time was MPPJ, Madras uh, Perbandaran. Um, they did not have records of that. So, we went to the land office. Also, we didn't have anything uh, about that. Or the only thing the land office had was the, the, the how to say, the distribution or the land plots. Yeah. Uh, uh, the same applies with JUPAM. And in 2021 or early 2022, we managed, we filed a case uh, with uh, Putrajaya for the Strata uh, Management Tribunal. Um, and we uh, basically brought the case to the Strata Tribunal um, to compel C Housing to release the original uh, plans building plans that were approved with the T and C, which we hope would include you know, parking as one of the conditions. Uh, but the representative from C Housing there uh, said that you know, we don't keep it in our records anymore. It's been 30, 40 years. Uh, and the problem with the Strata Tribunal is it cannot force uh, C Housing to hand over or it cannot issue a search warrant that would have to be done by the courts. So uh, th everything outside the court to, you know, going to all the departments and, and the tribunal have been exhausted. But uh, at the same time also, I think like, you know, getting those documents would be a comfort to residents to know, but it still doesn't really solve the problem going forward. That's why, that's why we are tackling it with the ministries and all because ultimately we want to find a solution to this. Uh, but one piece of reassurance uh, that residents can have also is with regards to the zoning of the area of the whole SIPA apartment. So under the PJ local plan, Rancangan Tempatan uh, Petaling Jaya, it is zoned as Kawasan uh, Be, 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 Kawasan Perumahan Density Rendah. Yeah, berkepadatan rendah. Ah, that's the word. Yes. Yeah. So kawasan perumahan berkepadatan rendah, meaning that number one, he cannot operate a car park lot at this moment of time because that's a commercial activity. Number two, if he wanted to build something out of the blue on that, let's say car park land, he cannot also because there is the density restriction. So technically, he's also at a deadlock, which is the small piece of assurance that residents can have at this moment. But I just wanted to you know, address that all avenues uh, to find the original documents have been exhausted. Yeah. Outside of starting a new case and uh, at that time, the MC was not willing to open a new legal case. Uh, yeah. One thing is because it's gone through the whole court process. Uh, yeah, I mean, we're going to Federal High Court, Appeals Court. Uh, so it probably cannot bring back the same case. Um, the most uh, I could see from this, uh, but I could be wrong, because uh, I'm not a lawyer, is that it could be used to demand compensation. Yeah, compensation for misleading advertisement. Yeah, I, I, I'm not sure how much it can compel, let's say, the third party owner to return the land to the apartments. So. We has it the strength of such documents uh, is I would think would still be limited la. That's why I say as far as we can go, it could be to demand compensation. And we actually did ask at the tribunal. I said, you know, okay, we can't get the documents. No one can, you know, see housing also cannot. I mean, cannot prove it doesn't have the documents, and the strata uh, tribunal doesn't have the power to to order them otherwise. But can we ask for compensation? And then they say, okay, you have to do this through the courts. <laughs> Still, yeah, yeah. But that's why. So even maybe having that plan also, at most we can ask for compensation, but that still doesn't solve the issue of ownership of the land. Yeah. I would say that, look, this uh, issue has been going so long and I don't understand what you have to gain by just holding on uh, like that. I think. If they are waiting for people to grow old and move out, I think it's a very nasty game to play. Uh, this neighbourhood could have been very nice. You know, low density housing with enough space, a little playground. 
um, but because of this dispute, you know, you, you have residents who are really affected by it, uh, not just by, you know, the value of their homes going down, but actually like physically affected uh, health-wise. Like uh, Annie has been unwell and been going to hospital for treatment. So I would urge them to come to the negotiating table once again and uh, let's Let's you know, like reset zero zero. See where we can uh, negotiate for for a mutually beneficial outcome. But I think it's been too long, you know, and I don't want it to drag further. So in fact, when I came here, um, a lot of people uh, advised me, you know, just don't get involved with this case because you can't solve it. But I think if all parties can come to the table, maybe we'll be able to get some movement.